Father God, as I've traveled many places and speak your word, as I've traveled many places and declare the name of Jesus Christ, at places where to pray and where to establish altars. Father God, I pray and I call upon your name because your name is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun. How are you, my brother? Good, good. Yes, I am. I thought I know you had done the square. Ah. Done the square picture. I, I have I've been over there. I'm saying this technology is just too much. This True. Technology is too much. True. You know, I was just, that's not a way of life, you know. That's right. A lot of obese people, you know, sick people. You know. Yes. That's not a way of life. Just too, oh, I lived out on Toronto for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Just like, like 15, 20 minutes lay on this beach. Right here, we get some sunshine, you know. Right, got it. Some fresh air. Mm -hmm. It's worth like one year sitting by computer and make million dollars. You know? <laughs> that is because true. When you're not healthy, that's right. You, know, you can't spend money. That's true. You can't take your money back out the other place. No, know? no, you, you cannot. cannot. No, you cannot. Uh, you it's cannot. Very ridiculous. The world is coming. The USA is worse. Eh? Mm -hmm. United States, Canada is good. Downtown Toronto is okay, but USA is even worse. Like many people, everybody like. Farmers, construction workers, everybody's on computer, like driving their cars and trying to get these hamburgers and just everything online, order food online. Yeah, lots of things are changing and it's not for the benefit and of them. love, you know, it's psychotic, you know. Yes. It's psychotic thing, you watch this online, it's mess with your head, mm -hmm. you know? like your eyes, you know, like, you know, it's, it's not healthy. That's right, that's right. What's your first name? Macon. Macon. Macon or? Macon. Macon. M A K A N. Macon. I live. Down by the, by Eton Center Mall. Oh, nice, nice, by nice. I'm, I'm always like drinking, you know. Yes. Is there any way you want? Can I pray for you? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Father God, as I'm here with Macon, who here I am was already talking to you, my God, and he shows up to ask me, recognize me from er other area where I've may been. Father God, that's a far distance from where I, where he recognized me to where I came here because I came here to pray. My God, your son asked, started to talk to me and he, he made so much great points, good point. Many people are suffering from the technology, from the things that's going on in the world today. He made valid points. He may be getting prior today, God, but he's a man that understands things. Father God, he talked about his heavy drinking. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you are a God that is able to deliver any man from anything, any woman from anything. And mighty God, you allow me to be here so I can um, pray for him. Can I rest my hand on your shoulder? Sure. Father God, as I lay my hand on his shoulder right now, you know him inside out. You know who, he's, who he is. You know what he's all about. You know where he came from. You know where he's going. You know his heart. You know his intention. Maybe many people have seen him and ignore him. He's a good person. Hey! He's a good person. I can see that he's a good person and God a great intention. But Lord Jesus, because you are who you are, God, I know that you can do something for him, even for this drinking that he talks about. Even for this drinking. Can I say something? Yes, please. Even when he's drinking, even like one beer, like 5% alcohol is better than smoking. All right. Smoking is bad for your heart, bad for your lungs, but drinking is way better than weed and other stuff going on around the world. Yes, yes. Especially downtown Toronto, that's the problem. You know? Yes. When they bring them, the drugs down, to, mm. like down, like down where the poor people, they put the most vulnerable people. You're you speaking know? real strong yeah. words. You're yeah. speaking. Alcohol. Alcohol, the beer is, but those weed they make legalized. The, yes. Is no good. Oh my God, oh, you're they speaking. Mess with their head because my brother used to smoke before, like my oldest brother. Yes. He, he's a, he, he's like also in a mechanic. Yeah? Yes. He has, a, he has a wife and a son, Elijah. Mm -hmm. His son name is Elijah. He's married. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's like getting into his life. Like uh, recently, he lost his job, mm -hmm. but then he got back on track because he even quit smoking. Right. Now he's back in a. But in the drugs, in the okay. But he's a good man. He he told me advice. You know, mm -hmm. even drinking beer is better than than even smoking. smoking cigarettes. Yes, you know? yes. Well, listen. I believe that there is something special about you, man. I believe that there's something really special about you. You have hit some really 
key points that our city is suffering from, that our country is suffering from, that our nation is suffering from. As a matter of fact, that thing that you mentioned there about this, this, this legalize of drugs and everything and put it into areas that vulnerable people that they don't have any choice but to go and accept it. My friend, that is, these are key words that you just mentioned. And I, God, as this man speak real word today, as he speak real word today, he have access to people that I do not have access to. He knows people on the street that maybe even see them. He's not a crazy man. He's just a man that, like he said, he's seen the things that's happening. He understands the things that's happening. Father God, I pray that you will use him for your purpose. Use him, God. You can you can use him greatly to do things for others who may not be able to do it for, your, for themselves. I sense it in this man that this man has a, 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 a vision. This man has seen things that maybe others have not seen. Even the government may have not seen it. God, I pray that you will open doors for him, that even him can go and speak to politicians because they are the ones who are permitting things. Go ahead. I have social media internet. Mm -hmm. Social media, you know? Yes. I can talk on the microphone. Yes. And then social media. Yes. Millions of people from South Africa, mostly from South Africa. Correct. A lot of people from my country, Iran. I was born You're born in, in, Iran. Born in Iran. Yes. I came here when I was 16. Okay. But I have social media, I have connection with a lot of Iranian. Like most of them are like, you know, poor people. They cannot, uh, there is no that much, uh, 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 like, like there is no, there is not that much allowance for the Iran people to have internet access like social media, like the one that I'm uh, have a uh, account for for 15 years, right? 2014. I've been online. I'm well, I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. First of all, you have some excellent idea. You have some real idea, ideas that sometimes I believe government listen when they hear real people speak. And what I'm going to do once I finish, let me just wrap up the prior and I'm going to continue praying with you. And you said you live downtown. I'm going to see if I could set up a way, one, to give you a chance to hear, to, to, to be heard. Secondly, I'm going to see if I can actually, I'm going to, I'll give you my number. You can actually call me anytime. But again, like I said, Lord God, again, like I said, this man has ideas that he knows can help his city, help his community. We're here in a beautiful place. There's so many residents around, so many places around, so many people around, and they all believe, you understand me? But sometimes somebody have to, 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 somebody have to stand up for things that can help the community. Father God, I pray as this man came to me to talk with me, I pray that you will deal with him, help him, work, open up doors for him, put things in his way that is possible for his benefit and i'm going to ask you to say the the lord's prayer with me i want you to repeat after me if you do not know it our father our father who art in heaven who art who, are in, who heaven. art in heaven all the way be thy name be thy name thy kingdom come thy kingdom kingdom come thy will be done thy will be done on earth on earth as it is in heaven as it is in heaven give us this day give us this day our daily bread our daily bread and forgive us and forgive us our trespasses i trust so our, our and forgive us our trespasses as, for you, trespasses as we forgive those as we forgive those who trespass against us who trust us against us lead us not lead us that into temptation into temptation but deliver us but deliver us from all evil from all evil for thine is the kingdom for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory the power and the glory forever and ever forever and ever amen Amen. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go across the, uh, the street. Do and you I'm gonna have a card? I'm going to give you my number. You have a and card? I don't have a card on me, but I'm going to give you my number. I'm going to write it for you. Right, okay. Right, so you have a, right. I'll put it in your phone. All right, I'm going to put it right in my wallet. My friend, you are a wonder, okay? All there right. it is. My number is right there. Give me a call anytime. 416-996-57. Okay? Your name is? I'm Errol. Errol. Yes. Master. It was Errol. a pleasure. I, I always come here always. I've been here for 30 years and I come again forever and ever. I, today I was led to be here and I felt it and we'll talk again, okay? I'm always downtown. Okay, beautiful. Thank you so much for stopping. That's what it's all about. Then when I say to you the importance of, of me trying to obey the voice of the Lord, 
when I see this is, I mean, I'm on the other side and I felt a need to be here. But I always say there's always somebody who, there's always somebody who happened to be in in my, God always knows somebody who need to be prayed for. I don't have the idea just to pick up and to get up and to go places on my own. But God always seems to lead me to go to places so I can at least speak into somebody's life. Somebody speak into somebody's life. Speak into somebody's life about the name of Jesus Christ. Speak into somebody's life about the name of Jesus Christ. Speaking to somebody's life about the name of Jesus Christ. And I hope whoever you are, I hope wherever you are, I hope you're listening to this right now. This was not stage. This is somebody I'm here praying and someone came to me and started to say, I saw you at a certain area which is in a particular area about prior. I certainly hope that as you listen to this, you too will know that every one of us can save somebody's life. You know what I mean? Every one of us can be of, of value. Every one of us can be of strength to somebody. Every one of us can be of encouragement to somebody. Every one of us. And everything, because we do not know what others are going through ever in the world. We do not know what others are going through. And even for now, even right now, I'm going to, you might be just listening wherever you are, but I'm going to pray that the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, whomever you are, wherever you are, I'm in an area where it's full of resident and everything, but there are people who are low only. Some of them could be, you never know who is on the verge of doing what. You never know who is on the verge of doing what. Sometimes just to tell somebody that Jesus Christ loved them it could be a meaningful thing just to tell somebody that Jesus loved them. Just to tell somebody you do not know who is in the lonely world. You do not know who whose world is lonely, who they feel literally, literally you do not know what, what is on their mind. People, if somebody could could just, you know, oh my God, if somebody could just understand that we live in a very wicked world, a world that sometimes, as I said, if you don't have money, you cannot make it. But then again, at the same time, you do not know who have money, but lonely as everything that can ever possible. So this very moment, I'm going to say that I pray that the Lord God Almighty, whomever you are, wherever you are, that you will recognize the name of Jesus. Christ, whoever you are, that you will accept that he is the Lord, that you will end in this area. You do not know who could need a word of encouragement. You do not know who could need a word of encouragement. How you doing, my friend? Just enjoying, eh? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful view. How you keeping? Well? Yes, yes. Be it's a really beautiful view. Yes. It's why from time to time I come here. Oh, nice. I, that's what the other young man was telling me. It's, but it's beautiful. It's a really, really beautiful. Well, nice to meet you, eh? Okay. Nice to talk to you. Thank you so much. Yes. So, you do not know who could get a word of encouragement. You do not know who. Everywhere we go. Like I said, this today was a... Again, I always believe that the Lord many times would lead me into places... Many people said, Errol, you're just showing off. And I know a lot of people have problem with the way that I go places. Well, if, if it's not people, the enemy don't like what I do. Because the, I, I, I sometimes give hope, not through me, but through individual, but through Christ. True Christ, I can give to somebody and to all the people out there who are doing the same thing likewise. They're giving hope, expect, uh, telling somebody, not even, it's not even like you're telling people about Christ every day. But the point that I'm trying to say to you, you do not know who is, what position people are in. You do not know where their head is at. You do not know their loneliness situation. I give I give props to people in the in the in the in the medical field a lot because sometimes you know I, I was talk, I was driving somebody some time ago and I heard the the husband saying to me, my wife is a you know high profile doctor, but even though they're high profile doctor, you know the way he was saying it to me, he said, look. Errol, I don't even know how my wife does it because she have to able to turn off that emotion, have to able to turn off, you know what I mean, because the amount of things that she sees in her medical field. Now, I must also say that a lot of those medical professional people, they also get messed up. 
because the stress of what they see and the, the, a loved one, have, they have to be facing loved one to tell them circumstances and things that are going on. It is not always a, a, a good thing because, you know, a lot of time the professional people have to tell these individuals the problem and tell them what's happening. And it's not always the greatest thing, you know what I mean? Doctors have to have a lot of, you know, they too can be dragged down. Why they can be dragged down? Because they have to literally, literally, these medical doctors have to face a, 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 a families to tell them exactly what's happening with their loved ones. So what I'm trying to say to you, this doctor was saying to me, he don't even know how his wife does it because, you know, for what his wife has to see uh, every day and, and, and the thing in the department in which she works and what she's responsible for, you know, it, it's not the bed of roses. You understand me? I hope somebody understand and could read between the line. It's not a bit of roses. So he as a husband telling me, I do not know, Errol, how my wife does it. Because the fact that she, the position and what she has to witness and then, you know, still come home and then turn off that emotion and turn off that, it, it is, it is, can become very stressful. And even him, he's expressing this to me. You know, so what I'm saying to you, whether the person is a doctor or the person is in each and their profession, everybody has to carry the heavy burden. You know, I mean, everybody has to carry the heavy burden. I remember some time ago, we, you know, we, we all like to bash certain people. I remember some time ago, a, a family, uh, a, a, um, family uh, of mine passed away, family member of mine passed away. And I remember I call, I mean, I'm a preacher, but you know, at the time, you know, it's whether I was a preacher or not, and I was not a preacher yet. I call, we call the, the, the pastor, I call the pastor. And again, you know, I could imagine, doesn't matter what time it was, I called the pastor to let him know that there's a, a family member passed and he, you know, he came by to empathize with us and to sit down with us that moment in time and everything because we're always people that go into situation, always looking for that, those people. So sometimes even us ourselves or other people, they, I'm not saying this as a makeup, they're bashing preachers and bashing uh you know, uh, society worker are bashing, you know, um, doctors are bashing the medical industry. I'm a pretty straight, a straight shooter. I tell it like it is. But what I'm trying to say to you, these individual, they also has stress. They also has stress. They're human being. They have stress. So when I'm saying to you that I go out and, you know, sometimes I don't even have to tell a person. They approach me. They approach me. Because in these places, I have altars. How you doing? In these places, I have altars. Altars that I've established. And you know, when I go to these places, I can go there known as if it's my outdoor church. And this is the reason why when God told me, day one, establish altars. Establish altars everywhere. Establish altars everywhere. Because I never know who am I going to help in that day. I never know who am I going to give a word of encouragement to that day. I never know who am I going to even run into who might be changing my life that day. Because that person may be saying to me, he may speak into my life. That person may speak into my life. That person may say something to me that speaks right into my life. That person may speak in my life. I remember one era that I was going to forever when the Lord gave me gave me ideas to go and start praying there. By the way, I love to go and pray where people are. I love to go and establish altar when the Lord put it on my mind to establish altars in certain areas because listen to me, these are lives, these are souls, these are mine, these are people. These are people, and in our city, our city are taken over by a lot of evil force. These are people. I know a lot of people don't like what I do. I know a lot of people hate what I do. But at the same time, I'm not doing it for man. I'm doing it for God. And a lot of, a lot of evil, a lot of evil doesn't like what I do. Sometimes I go in an area to pray and I could feel the demons from the pit of hell. I could feel the dark force in that area. 
I could feel it. By the way, these are all beautiful buildings put up. These are all excellent buildings. Beautiful, great building. Play, great place for relaxation. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. But let me tell you something. Many of these places, blood, demonic, um, um, witchcraft has been... These are places, some of these places, way before these things happen these are places where witchcraft and and other areas were 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 done where blood was shed where innocent blood was shed so you do not know when a be beautiful place goes up when a beautiful place and you you sit where you sit and you, and you enjoy where you enjoy you do not know that many of these places were sacrificed men life blood witchcraft sacrifice was done there sacrificial we're done and this is the reason why the enemy doesn't like what i do this is the reason why the enemy doesn't like what i do this is the reason why the enemy doesn't like what i do i can tell you something don't think i just happily running to go do it all the time many times i go in there i'm in the area when i finish i'm sick like i sick many times i go into area to pray i throw up like i throw up Hallelujah. This morning I was at an altar playing and when I, I mean, threw up like I feel like I'm going to die. You know, you know, we like to like go and ask the doctor, how do you feel doctor? Go and ask the firefighter, how do you feel walking into that building? And knowing that you have to walk out empty handed because you cannot walk out with those lives because unfortunately you cannot find them. Ask the medical person who, who is in medical when she walks into a room and you try to save the life but you cannot save them. Go and ask them, how do you feel? I have to literally encourage that I got to take the, we got to remove the equipment. Somebody's broken. Somebody's life is broken. So by the way, I always the kind of guy who said, don't so be willing to bash. Now at the same time, let me say this to you, there are war all over the nation. Anyone who goes in and try to help, it become, uh, become an enemy. There are war in different part of the world, different part of the world. And if you try to bring goods in, you are going to be under attack. Let me say this to you. There's some part of the world that they're war and they cut off all different kind of stuff that no, nothing can get to them. No supplies. Well, when you go in or any other country, go in to support that country, support those group of people, then you become enemy of those who declare war on those people. Well, let me tell you something. When you go into areas and spreading the name of Jesus Christ, playing the blood against some of the wickedness in the area some of the the devil and the darkness and the witchcraft and the force of evil and i come on now let me talk to somebody when you're going to certain areas and trying to tear down straight satan stronghold let me tell you something a, a preacher told me one day and a, an apostle told me one day she said errol whatever you do whatever you do this is what she said to me and boy she was ever she was listening well from god she said whatever you do errol when you go into these places places cover your family first cover your family cover your family cover your family cover your family oh god almighty you do not know the danger that cause the enemy will declare war on you the enemy will declare war on you so I beg the Almighty God, cover my family, cover me. But I'm not, I'm not afraid. In other words, you may say, Errol, you're too brave, you're too brave. But you see, it, my, 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 what I do is, is God who empowered me to do it. Yes, that's God who empowered me to do it. I don't do it on my own. I don't do it because I'm, I want to do it. I don't do it because I want to do it. I do it because I am empowered. I'm empowered. I know I will have to fight against evil will always attack me. I'm not here to talk to plea, plead bargain. I'm just here to say that I know for sure that I will be under attack. So the, the apostle said, whenever you go places to your altar, the first thing that you do is to cover your family, cover your children, cover your house. I gotta say this to you. You may not believe it. You may call me a liar. You may call me a liar this very day. 
But I remember one day I went to an altar and when I started to declare the name of Jesus Christ, and when I started to declare the name of Jesus Christ, when I started to declare the name of Jesus Christ, something was going on and I was declaring the name of Jesus Christ and I was declaring the name of Jesus Christ at the altar and I knew something was wrong because this, ah, I can't tell you everything, I can't tell you everything. You're gonna tell me all kind of story. Say, D, don't talk to me, let me talk to you. But you see, I'm in a warfare ministry. I'm in a business ministry where I'm not fighting against flesh and blood. I'm fighting against principalities, rulers of darkness, evil, force in high places. A preacher who knows me well said to me, Errol, no, as a matter of fact, he was talking to me about, let me tell you something. I have invited a few ministers to my altar, some altars location already, and they said, Errol, we don't feel comfortable. We don't feel comfortable here. We don't feel comfortable here. We don't feel comfortable here. I've been at places various time of the night pray. God doesn't tell me that God doesn't say, okay, it's midday. Now you can go where sun is shining bright. I can't tell you everything because I'm an altar man. So I accept what God gave me. I accept the direction God gave me. I accept the mission God gave me. I accept it with no complaint. So I'll tell you this right now, people on the street need to hear the word of God. People on the street need to hear the word of God. I am cursed daily. I am cursed monthly. I am cursed daily. I have had people call me and ask me, who do you think you are? I kind of want to say people, but they're not people. I've had people, yes to, but I've had things who do you think you are i know a lot of you gonna call say this is a lie and this is a doubt and this is this and this is that say whatever you want but i can tell you something right now that many times if it wasn't for god and if it wasn't that the blood of jesus christ cover me and by the way i dare not go to those places that uncovered i'll be dead i dare not go to those places uncovered i will be dead Hallelujah. If you don't believe it, ask the bad boy who, who is who dealing with, with guns and other things and everything. Our gang. He knows you can't just show up. You can't just be a part of it. He knows. He knows I will be, he will be killed for drugs, for this, for that. Because he's in a war business. Any soldier go up to the military, they have to train to use a weapon because he's in the war business. That when they're talking about missionary, they're in the war business. So when God sent me out to build an altar, you may not believe it, but I'm in the war business. And I know they're going to be strike, they're going to be missile, they're going to be nuclear missile, demon missile, they're going to be missile coming at me. But it doesn't matter because I am, I already accept that charge. I already accept the charge to go and do things for Christ. I already accept it. Can't turn back now. The word of the Almighty God said, Woe unto one who, who put his hand on the, on, the, on, on the plow and remove it. I cannot turn back now. Cannot turn back now. Way too late. I got too far. Let me tell you something. A lot of people don't understand a lot of the things what I'm saying. And you will never understand some of the things what I'm saying, some people. But let me tell you something. Sometimes I wish that I wasn't doing what I do. But you see, people that are serving big offices and big position, when they're removed from those offices and position, they still have to be protected because they still have enemies. One day I was praying somewhere and somebody, and then they came to me, a service, they came to me and asked me to pray. And when they asked me to pray and I started to pray, as I was about to put my hand on the person, I heard a voice that don't touch me. How could somebody ask me to pray? And I, I don't mean it that way. And it wasn't the same voice who talking. It wasn't the same voice. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. But anyhow, I'm not taking instruction from him. I'm taking instruction from God. And so I decided to. And so I decided to. Let me tell you something. He was railing higher than I probably could hold him. Why? He, this 
possess. Say whatever you want, say it how you want. I know that there are good people, there are bad people. I know that they are evil force. And that they are, I know that they are good spirit. You may not believe it. I don't get things to tell it to you. I don't get things to keep talking to you. I don't get it to tell you. Because if I tell you all what I see, I show you that that literally, if anybody doubt me, I could always get this preacher on the phone someday to let him say. He said, of all his years been in ministry, he have never witnessed anything like that. So am I telling you stories? Am I giving you running things to you? I know that demons hate what I do. I know evil hate what I do. I know that I, evil hate the fact that I'm doing something for people. I know that. I know my life is always a threat. I know that. And that's the reason why the apostle said, whatever you do. And I pray that sometimes people hear me praying, but get, guess what? I'll be grateful if I know somebody's on the other side praying. Let me tell you something. I'll be grateful if I understand that somebody's on the other side praying for me. Because I know I deal with the war zone. I deal with territory. The place may look nice, but beneath the surface, beneath the, underneath the broadwalk or oh, through the broadwalk, what is there? What kind of force is there? What kind of evil that's there? This day that you're listening, I pray that you understand that this is not a game. And I even ask you, wherever you are, don't fail to pray for me. Because I continue to do the will of God and it is not always easy. The devil will do whatever, he will try to do whatever he can. But the Almighty God said he will protect me. The Almighty God said he will protect me. But you see, the Holy Spirit already rim, let me got into that and soak into that to realize there was, there was a message there coming to me that, to let me know the war zone. The war zone, I mean, I didn't know, but it was all over me. Though war may rise up against me, yet I will be confident. The 27 Psalms, God is always preparing his people. I hope today, as you listen to my voice i hope today that you are encouraged to stand up for god stand up for god it doesn't matter peter paul i think it was peter or paul said for me to live is christ i think it was one of them said for me to live it's christ for me to live it's christ i don't want god to say to me i have given you an order and a commission and you fail to do it Done it before, I don't want to hear it again, that God said, I have given you an order, and you failed to do it. That young man who came to me today, not just a young man, but that man who came to me and said to me, I saw you're a preacher, right? I didn't tell him I was a preacher. I'm in an area, I didn't tell him I was a preacher. He said, I saw you at a certain area before. Now I know exactly where he's talking. But what, what I'm trying to say to you, I didn't plan to come here and I'm not here that often. But there a man came to me and I was able to pray with him. There a man came to me and I was able to pray to him. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Let God be glorified. Let God be glorified.